Dear Dr. Mustafa Magbouli for your speech and now ladies and gentlemen we'll move on to a uh, round table discussion to be facilitated by Dr. Rani al the Minister of the International Cooperation and the Egypt Governor of the new NDP. And the panelist, uh, the prominent economist, politician, uh, um, Dr. Singh, to navigate the role of the PRICS and the role of the NDP and the solution to of the emerging states and as well as the role of the NDP of the multiple role. Good morning. Once again, we wish to welcome Professor Singh in Egypt. Uh, to the multilateral system and also BRICS. When it was announced here in Egypt that uh, the country is joining BRICS, there was a lot of excitement within the different uh, circles in society, academicians, parliamentarians, businesses. I wanted to ask you, when you think about BRICS, uh, is it a complementary block to the international system or should it be seen as a replacement or a competition? How should all of us think about the BRICS bloc and how can it be beneficial to Egypt? Well, thank you very much, uh, Minister. It's a great privilege for me uh, to be here with this distinguished with the Honorable Prime Minister's initiative taken by uh, the President, a far-reaching initiative Prime Minister, Finance Minister and his company. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm delighted to take part in what is the, the for Dilma's point of view, the first time outside uh, this kind of a, um, arrangement and this kind of an interaction. You ask the difficult question of the future of the BRICS in a certain way. And why BRICS is relevant? Well, let me put it in a couple of ways. First, could BRICS become the conscience of the world? Could it become the timekeeper? Could it be the stock taker? The world needs entities like the BRICS to be able to bridge, for instance, what I mentioned, bringing together a greater uniformity of policies and the application of supervisory norms, accounting norms, assignment of markets, issues of evaluating the nature of risks, making them less discriminatory, exploring the ability for innovative financing. You know very well that uh, today one dollar from the balance sheet of the World Bank or multilateral development banks harnesses seven dollars from the private capital on the other hand, from the from public capital but similarly private capital they are able to harness only 0 0.6 less than one I think there is a huge information gap this information gap of what can be done the Prime Minister touched on two important issues. One, I could make out the Prime Minister mentioned and the Finance Minister mentioned earlier, the Prime Minister particularly, on taking care of the foreign exchange fluctuations. It's a very important hurdle for private capital to come in. Can BRICS Bank play a role? I believe that they have an important role to play in being able to mitigate the fluctuations on exchange risk. They have an important role to play in, for instance, 
making more innovative use of guarantees. So I would say that the Egypt making the BRICS a much deeper presence in a very important part of the world enhances both its reach and the voice of the South. And in short, could BRICS become the new conscience keeper of the world in being able to harness more and more imaginative forms of finance. Thank you very much, and I'm sure the panel discussions are going to shed more light on that particularly. Professor Singh, you gave us alarming statistics that as the world is calling for more cap emerging economies, actually the com money is flowing outside of emerging economies. And the number that you mentioned, $50 billion, uh, and the expectations of more outflows is quite significant. In your opinion, what should the MDBs, what should the policies be to be able to reverse this? As you mentioned, there are so many reports coming out, lots of expert groups, and we're very honored that you're part of these groups. What is the solution for this trend to be reversed in action? Well, I would say, uh, Minister, comes to my mind that uh, four or five things in mitigating risks that private capital sees. Uh, regulatory risks, risks of other kinds. So I think that the one important thing they can do is certainly make GEMS, which is the global database, harnessed by technology, more publicly available. This would dispel in my view, a lot of the false risk perception which private capital has on uncertainties, for instance, of regulatory regimes, on uncertainties leading of other kinds of, as I said, foreign exchange uncertainty. First, loss gar guarantee by MEGA and playing a much greater role in terms of what MEGA can do. So the first big effort must be to mitigate the risk perceptions of private capital through better and more symmetrical information flows and also in terms of allowing the balance sheet of the multilateral development banks taken as a whole to be able to mitigate some of these risks which will attract private capital because you must encourage the attraction of private capital because you know very well that substantial part and the burden of orderly climate financing will have to be borne by private capital and the multilateral development banks acting in tandem with each other, in symmetry with each other, have a very, very crucial role to play. My final question is related to the NDB. This is uh, a conference to uh, create awareness among businesses in Egypt, government in Egypt, think tanks in Egypt with what uh, the NDB uh, is doing in terms of its tools and its priorities. Um, from your analysis of the bigger and bolder and better MDBs, what can NDB do for us as countries of the South, particularly that uh, we are all putting a lot of emphasis on our voice being transmitted more strongly through the NDB? Well, you know, uh, uh, I recognize, first of all, we must be pragmatic enough to recognize that the autonomy of each of the MDBs who have their own systems, processes, and management and shareholders, that autonomy must be fully respected. And everything which you must do must be within the framework of respecting the individual autonomy. Having said this, there is an old adage, Minister, that very often in life, very often in life, the final product is much more than the sum of the parts. MDB is a classic case where MDB is acting in symmetry with each other, the outcome is far greater than what MDBs can achieve individually. So my third point really is, what are the ways in which they can act in terms of supervisory standards, 
in terms of accountability procedures, in terms of avoiding the duplication of going into the same thing again and again. If, if one MDB has made an evaluation of, uh, let us say, an infrastructure project, there is no need to duplicate that thing identical, very often in the same MDB, and certainly from one MDB to the other. So supervisory standards, assessment standards, in building, for instance, robust country platforms, it's a very important part of the reforms. Unless you have a robust country platform, you'll only be driven by the headquarters of the MDBs and having a robust pipeline of credible investment proposals. But you need a mechanism for enabling the MDBs to act in symmetry and in tandem. One of the big things which has happened is an initiative which we need. In a tentative way, we need to deepen that. Could there be institutional arrangements, let us say, for the MDBs to meet more regularly as a family than meeting in a stray way at the time of the spring meeting and at the time of the uh, annual meeting of the IMF because all of them are there. Some of them meet in anecdotal ways, but we need an institutional arrangement in which, let us see, through turns, each of the MDB can take a lead in being able to convene a meeting of the MDBs at least twice a year and certainly make the arrangement of meeting at the time of the spring and the world meeting a, a, a regular institutional arrangement. Harmony in exchanging views, decisions, decision-making process, utilizing innovative ways of financing and using, for instance, the capability which one MDB may have in terms of being able to manage guarantee can be beneficial to the other MDBs as a whole. I think that this arrangement would enable the MDBs to act as a family more cohesively than act atomistically in terms of their own individual framework. First, thing, thank you very much for these uh, insights in terms of uh, country platform. Egypt has a country platform, Nexus of Water, Food and Energy in Wafi, and we work with all the MDBs collectively. So we will, in our sessions, discuss that more for more south-south uh, and triangular cooperation. We want to thank you for your presence, and we want to thank everybody who joined us this morning for the opening uh, of uh, the NDB seminar in Egypt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Singh. Thank you, Dr. Rania Al-Mashat. كل الشكر والتحية والتقدير لدولة رئيس مجلس الوزراء دكتور مصطفى مدبولي لتشريف هذه الجلسة المتحدة.